Hello everyone. Um, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Um, whenever you're watching this uh, um, this video, so this is lecture eight. Today I'm going to be covering aspects of uh, input validation. How how do you go about validating input? You know, we did cover. Um, you know, I did talk about the peak method earlier on in my previous lecture, but this one's going to be covering uh, fail method, clear, ignore, um, etc. So and and there'll be some more in the next one. And I'll be using the AND or OR operators. Basically, the idea is um, when you write a program, uh, you need to validate input. But that's at a very high level. But you might have certain criteria, certain requirement for you to um, uh, for you to be able to what do you call it? Uh, you make this bigger so you're able to see this one here, this one here, and then this one here. Okay, so. So you'll be able to um, validate the input. So in, so you might have um, an integer, and you're asking the user to input an integer, and he's inputting a character, or vice versa. But you you want to you want to tell him, look, I asked you for a character. You're putting in an integer, or vice versa, depending on your on your need. So be you are able to guide him. And then at the same time, you want to be continuously, you should be taking an input one after the other. It doesn't, it does not have to be a one-time thing. So uh, what I'm trying to do, a bad example would be that I ask the user for an input and I tell them, I give them only one chance. I, you know, I try to ask him for an input, take that input, try to do some computation and I cannot do it because the character is invalid or the integer is invalid, etc. And I say, oops, you messed up. Uh, I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to have some kind of a looping mechanism um, that we can loop through and give them enough chances, um, you know, keep looping through it uh, until I get a valid input. So in this case, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm, I have a short, okay, which is called a number. Short, like I said, it's similar to an integer, but the magnitude is pretty small. And the short varies from... Um, from one compiler to the other, but think of it as a small number. And then I say, hey, enter a value, and then I see in a value, and then I loop. This is the beginning of my loop, okay? It's the end of the loop. And I do C in um, dot fail. Now, dot fail, what it does is, let's say, for example, if I'm asking for a number and the user enters in a character, it's going to fail. And then th at that point, what I do is I go into the loop. I clear. So I clear out the input stream, whatever I've read. So I have a fresh input stream at that point. And that's what clear does. So um, it clears out the input stream. And then I tell him, hey, it's an invalid character. And what you see here is, is kind of interesting is I use the peak command. And you know, I, since I've, uh, I, after the fail command, I clear the screen, but I, I, I peak, right? what it is i peek into the what the user has entered right and i static cast that to a character because you know peek is going to return the ascii code uh it's just one of those things i i don't care about the ascii code i care about the character so it's i static cast it to a character um and then i tell the user hey invalid character and i and i output that character and i say you know try again and then that character uh, I ignore. So that's what this command does. Um, it ignores the um, input stream. Okay, it ignores it. And then I uh, I read it again. So what essentially what I've done is I've read in for the first time, and in this you know and and, and if it failed, I clear the input stream and I, and I say hey it's an invalid character, uh, and then I and and then I do a C and peak and I static cast that, and I say hey try it try again. Uh, and then I read it again, and then finally, um, this is a type of what it should be. You know, I was playing around with it. This should be you enter it in a um, a short number. That's what it should be. So now let's see how this how this works in um, in real life. Help if I bring this up a little bit, right? So I ran it as asking me to enter a value. I'm going to enter in a character, invalid character. As long as I keep doing this, see this old say invalid character so many times. So I do T, 
and then I do W. It's going to keep saying that until I put in a number. See? Perfect. You entered a short number. See that again? I'll run it. Enter a value. W in valid character. Try 2. Perfect. You entered a short number. So that's the uh, that's the gist of the program, right? So the key commands that we just learned um, uh, are the fail, the clear, and the ignore. The peak you learned there already. You can play around with it. Um, try out a program just by itself and uh, and see it how how it works out for you. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on the input validation and and, um, and go into the uh, the next example that I have. The next one is a little bit more involved. Um, so in it, there is a while loop. Uh, but in this, what I also do is besides, um, let's say besides just checking for a character or a number, the other thing I do is if, a, if the user has entered in a very long number, right? So that's gonna fail. So it, here, short number enter a value c in number and then it does while c and fail now if c and failed um you know if if it didn't fail for one of the above reasons it's likely the case that the magnitude is too large it's too large of a number so you come to the else part uh similar to the previous syntax uh cn dot clear and then i peek if it's not the new line character that means i'm still in my input stream I ignore it, and then what? Then I then I peek, okay, because I want to be looping, and I peek. If it's not the new line character, um, you know, and and there's a space, I, I keep you know keep moving. I keep ignoring, so because I want to keep reading. And if I have reached the new line character, um, you know, and and still I haven't gotten a number, then I say invalid numeric format. Please try again. I mean, now, when I try to describe this to you, it, I know it might sound confusing, but just try to follow the logic. Uh, but let me run it here, and I'll, I'll see if I can uh, run through that logic again. So I'll type in, um, it's a really large number, okay? Watch what happens. Number magnitude is too large. Try again. So what happened here is I came into this while loop, okay? If it's not a new line character, I ignore it. If it's not a new line character, and if it's a space, I ignore it. Um, uh, if it's if it's a new line character, blah blah blah. All of these conditions fail. Then the likelihood is that the magnitude was too large, and that's why I say, hey, magnitude is too large. And then I come into the C in number. Okay. So now I have another try. So I'll do. Let's do this bunch of characters space bunch of characters again now now see in the previous program what happened was when i had all these characters it would output each and every character at the same time you know it'll say invalid format invalid format so if i had five characters entered it would say invalid characters um uh, five times right um, which is uh, which is problematic, okay? Whereas now, because of the changes that I made, I have a sp I have spaces in there, lots of characters. It only says numeric format. Well, that is because of having this in here, you know, all of this, all of this stuff right here. Let me try to break it down. Um, what's going to happen is as I uh, so let's take this for an example, okay? I'll do the same thing. Please try again. I want this. I want characters. Just characters. Invalid numeric format. Now let's look at this. So I try it again. Okay. It's gonna it's gonna try to read it. Okay. Seeing that clear. And then what it does is it peeks at the next character. If it's not a new line, it comes in here. Okay. Okay. So it's not a new line character. Then I go in here and ignore as it. And I told you what ignore does, right? Um, then um, if it's not if it's not a new line character and is space C and peak, 
then I still try to ignore it because what might have happened is, um, you know, I've got characters, something like this, followed by a space, right? And then something else after it. So I need to ignore it because I want to continuously uh, keep reading. Now, if, if I've come to this point and I do see in peak is new line, that means I've read it and the number was, um, I've read it and then it was, uh, it was an invalid numeric format. Now, like I think some of you might get confused because there's a, a there's a combination of the AND and OR logic and a combination of these uh, these commands. Uh, but if you don't have to exactly understand the logic um, as 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 I did, if you have a different way of doing this, it's fine as well. Uh, but I think the idea that I was trying to get across is the usage of the command peak we talked about. Uh, let me close this. Uh, peak is what I talked about already. Uh, the ignore command I just mentioned uh, and the fail command. So the reason for me to show you this was to kind of illustrate the usage of those uh, of those commands. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let me keep moving here. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to cover was um, strings. This is something I'm very excited about. Now we're getting into some uh, uh, something that you might get a little bit more excited about if you're not excited already. Um, this is about strings. So string or strings, I should say string is made up of characters. Um, C had uh, characters. Uh, so if you really wanted a uh, multiple characters, you needed to have a pointer to a character. So behind the scenes, a string is a pointer to a character. Um, so it's a space in, in the memory in the heap, um, and it points to a certain place, and that's where the characters are stored. But you don't have to worry about it because you have the luxury of using strings as it is without worrying about how it's implemented behind the scenes. So the way to go about it is the first thing you ought to do is include the library called uh, string, okay? And actually, let me, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, let me continue on. So um, the keyword is string itself, and here I say string s. And here, this th these two are different ways of initializing a string. You can say, like in this case, string W equal to a string that you want to, or you can say string Z, and in parentheses, you can give it uh, CSC 121, or you can give it a string. Both the both these ways are um, work equally as well, not a problem, depends on your preference. Uh, if you really want to get into nitty gritty of it, the way the second one works is, um, you are you're having an object Z and you initialize it in the constructor to CSC 121. Now this kind of uh, notation will make sense once we cover classes. We're not there yet, but just so you know, this is another way of, of describing a string. And you can and you can use the equals operator. So in this case, I'm saying string A equals to W. Okay. So I declared a new string and I made it equal to W. What that means is now A should have hello. Um, and then here, what I'm doing is I declare a string B and I initialize is to the value of Z. So basically I'm copying the contents of W into A in, in line 18 and the contents of Z into B on line 19. Uh, the other, so that's about strings and its initialization. The next thing I wanted to cover is the um, the method called length. Now, I'll talk about C again. If you had to do it, if you had to measure the number of characters in a string, you would have to loop through the list of characters one by one and increment a counter. And at the end, that's how you'd find out what the length of the string is. But here in this case, uh, you can just go ahead and use length. So length of string W is is what it should be. Hello, one, two, three, it should be five. Length of string A. Now string A um, 
had the contents of W. If you recall here, A equals to W. And the other thing you could do is, so A dot length should be 5 also. And the other method that you have available for string is um, the add. So, you know, you can add two strings together. Um, that's a readily available. Let me go ahead and run the program here. <laughs> So length of string W is 5, hello is 5, and look at this one. Length of string A is also 5, right? And that is because we said A equal to 5. Now, if I did B here, the length is going to be the same, all right? Because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, C, is C, 121 is 5. 1, 2, 3, sorry, it's 6. Yep, I counted wrong. Um... Okay, and then after I concatenate the two, I get hello CSC 121. And you could even do um, to get a little bit clean, uh, cleaner, add a space in between, and then do this. Okay, so here I've added a, a space in between. Hello, CSC 121, and now you have a space in between the two. So you have the uh, the add operator that you can use, the length. And the other thing I wanted to cover is there's also another method in here uh, called size. Let's use size instead of length and see what happens, and then I'll explain. Same thing. So you can either use length or the size. Both of these methods are readily available for you to use. Um, okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay, include string and the initialization of string, uh, copying of one string into another, uh, the length and the size method. Now I'm going to build on, on a similar example that I have written here already, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll cover it. Oops, let me hide the this. Um, so what am I doing here? Int main c out. Welcome to the string function C++ program. Just an output statement right there. Then I have a string called hello, and I initialize it to the to hello and world to world. And then I have another string called concatenated string, and all that is is hello plus world. Now, if you're thinking in your head, you can kind of imagine what it what it's going to do. Uh, and then I have a copied string, which what a copy has is the concatenated string. Okay. Um, and then after that, I say I output the length of um, hello. I should say in that case, to be specific, I say what's the size of hello. And I say what's the size of the world. And, I, and if you recall from the previous example, uh, both of these methods are going to uh, give you uh, the length of the string. Um, and then I have the length of the concatenated string that, um, that I output. And then I have the the size of the copied string. Now, if you're thinking, let's just go ahead and, 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 and see what the size is going to be. So the size of the string hello should be, how many characters are here? Five, right? So I should say five. And then how many characters are in the world? Five again. Uh, as you do size or length, you're going to get the same thing. Uh, and then the concatenated string, you add both of them together. 5 plus 5, you should be getting 10. Um, and then I have a copied string, which is the same thing as concatenated string because the, the contents of one string are copied to an, into another. And if you say the length of copied string, that should be 10. So let's go ahead and run this. There we go. The length of hello is 5. The length of the world is 5. The concatenated string and also the copied string is 10, right? Because copied string is nothing more. It's got the same contents as a concatenated string. So sometimes what you have in a string is a character that you don't visibly see on the screen, but it's there as part of that string itself. Let me. Let me show you what I'm trying to do. 
Now here, I put in a new line character, but you don't see the new line character. You see its impact, but watch what happens. See, the length of hello is now six. That is because I added something to help at the end of hello. Okay. Um, what else? Yeah, so I think that's what I wanted to cover for now. Uh, uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is a, uh, is a different type of, uh, you know, watch, I should say const, let me say string s. And then what I'm going to do is string plus equals, plus equals hello. Let's do this, hello equals new string, okay? Now, at the end, I'm going to input, uh, string s is, let's, okay, now let's run this. See what happened here? I have a string s, which is called new string. Okay, and then um, I add it. So this is another way to concatenate two string. If you haven't s seen this notation, it's uh, s plus equals hello, and it is it's exactly the same as um, s plus hello. Okay, so if you see the output here, string s is new string hello. Okay, it concatenated hello, the string hello to a new string. Now if I were to do this. new string hello same thing so this is just a different way shorthand notation for saying s equals s plus hello or you can say you can say say exactly the syntax okay so hopefully you get the uh gist of it today you know we looked at peak we looked at ignore we looked at fail we looked at clear these functions of the uh, input and output stream, and then we went into strings, the length function, initialization of strings, etc., uh, concatenating the two strings, uh, the size and the length uh, method. Um, essentially, they, they're they doing the same thing, uh, outputting of the strings, uh, copying of one string to another. Um, so, hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll see you guys uh, next class.